Hey everyone, and welcome back to Auto Wisdom. Today, we are sitting behind the wheel of a relatively special car, which is a 2018 Lexus RCF. And this RCF in particular is quite special as it is the F 10th anniversary limited edition spec. It is finished in a gorgeous matte paint color known as Mercury Gray provided by Lexus, along with this supple blue leather interior, blue, black, and silver carbon fiber accent trims as well. Now, before we dive into some additional details, let's give it a quick pull, shall we? <laughs> wow, listen to that V8. What an incredible exhaust note. Oh my. <laughs> Forgive me, I accidentally uh, hung on to the rev limiter a little bit too much right there. This RCF is powered by a five liter naturally aspirated V8 and truly it is sort of the last of its kind. When the RCF was first unveiled, it wasn't received particularly well by a lot of automotive reviewers and consumers for the reason that it just wasn't exceptionally fast by modern standards, especially when you sort of compare this car to its competitors like the BMW M4, which features a very potent twin turbo inline six cylinder engine. And then in addition to that, this car also has a exceptionally high curb weight of around 4,000 pounds even, which does not make it the lightest car by any means. Now that this car has been in production for almost eight or nine years, I think I have grown to really love it for a few reasons in particular. This power plant, this 5 liter naturally aspirated V8 that produces 467 horsepower and 389 pound feet of torque is an absolute gem. It revs to around 7300 RPM and it sounds like a cross between a Mustang Coyote 5 liter V8 and an E92 M3 4 liter cross plane V8. It's got a hint of that exotic, like high-pitched, you know, motorsport tone with a blend of that depth and rowdiness that you get out of the Coyote 5 liter. And it just makes for such a brilliant, brilliant exhaust combination. And in addition to that, these sorts of powertrains are a dying breed. We're not getting these types of engines from manufacturers anymore. And you really got to give props to Lexus for sticking with their guns for so long and continuing to manufacture these vehicles <laughs> with such joyous power plants. And it's unfortunate that they're not going to be in production for very much longer. So let's go ahead and dive into some particular details about this car, as well as what the F 10th anniversary edition gets you. This was a special edition back in 2018 that celebrated the 10th anniversary of the F-Series vehicles that Lexus has produced. And as a result, you get this standard factory matte gray um, paint finish in addition to this blue leather and blue carbon fiber interior, which looks absolutely stunning. I'm not typically fond of blue interiors, but on this car, it works in such a lovely combination. And when you factor in the blue, black, and silver carbon fiber, some of the contrast stitching, and the white elements on the seats, it just works in a way that I never thought was even conceivable. You also get blue painted brake calipers. You get the factory carbon fiber package as standard, so that includes a carbon fiber roof, which reduces the curb weight of the car, helps to lower the center of gravity, improve stiffness as well of the chassis and the body. You also get a carbon fiber active rear wing and a carbon fiber rear bonnet. So it's actually painted obviously, but underneath the paint is a, a carbon fiber, I'm guessing a CFRP trunk essentially is what it is. <laughs> it 
It's also fully optioned out in terms of driver assistance features and luxury amenities. Heated and cooled seats, Mark Levinson audio system, the entire suite of Lexus um, driving assistance aids are all available at your disposal with this car. And so it is a very nicely loaded spec. And not to mention those gorgeous 19 inch forged aluminum wheels, which look so aggressive and just really help to complement the striking design and nature of this car. Those wheels are wrapped in some proper rubber. We've got some Michelin Pilot Sport 4S summer tires, 255 by 35 by 19, I believe in the front and 275 by 35 by 19, if I'm not mistaken, in the rear. Definitely plays a significant factor in the handling characteristics of this car and the ability to accelerate without feeling like you're gonna do a burnout into third gear in this car. It's also important to note that this car gets the Lexus torque vectoring differential as standard. It can very variably distribute power to both of the rear wheels to achieve increased cornering grip and better turn in with the car. This helps with overall rotation and just the overall handling dynamics. In addition to that, there's a little button that's labeled TVD that where you can actually toggle different settings for the differentials. So currently I have it in track mode, but there's also a standard TVD option, a slalom option for like auto crossing, and then the track mode, of course, which is my preferred selection. <laughs> In addition to that, you do get quite a few driving modes, um, ranging from eco, although it is hard to make the argument that this car is eco-friendly when you have such a monstrous power plant underneath the hood of this thing, um, to a standard normal driving uh, mode, in addition to sport, sport plus, and then what I currently have it in is sport S. So this is essentially the sportiest um, version of the driving mode that you can tailor this car to. Now in this setting, the active suspension setup also stiffens up a good bit, but this car is very comfortable and it's very well damped. Overall, the interior and sound insulation as well provide a very comfortable feeling. If I was to throw this thing into eco mode, it would be incredibly quiet, supple, and comfortable, but in the Sport Plus setting, it's firm, but it's not overly damped. It's not anything that's gonna make you feel like it's it's almost embarrassing to take people in it because you know it's so stiff over the various roads and undul undulations that you may be experiencing on a day-to-day -day drive. It's absolutely dailyable in that sense, and it's very comfortable. Now, one thing I do want to touch on with this car is this transmission. That is an eight-speed automatic transmission. It is not a dual clutch. It is a torque converted unit that Lexus has been using um, basically since the days of the ISF. And for the RCF, they've made a ton of changes in terms of the programming and the overall software tuning for the gearbox. This is a really good automatic transmission. I am incredibly impressed with how responsive it is. And not only that, its ability to almost predict the need for downshifting and upshifting as well. One thing that I can really appreciate about this car is that it will not auto upshift for you. If you bring it all the way up to the red line of around 7,300 RPM, just as you guys saw earlier, this thing will slam the rev, li the rev limiter and it will not upshift for you. You're gonna have to toggle that paddle or you're gonna have to press the gear selector forward if you're in manual mode and it just, adds this really ballistic feel to the car. It just, it feels so monstrous and aggressive and exciting. And I absolutely love that. In addition to the fact that, yes, this tor torque converted gearbox is incredibly responsive and it has these brutal upshifts that definitely are reminiscent of a dual clutch transmission. It's extremely responsive as well. When I select the paddle shifters, I mean, there's fourth gear, there's third gear, here's second gear, just like that. a slight delay when you're approaching red line and you hit the upshift paddle where you will fully press the paddle shifter and there will be maybe a quarter to half second delay um, before the actual gear change occurs but outside of that this is a lovely transmission and it i love the sound it makes on the upshifts it's almost like a pop and it's really satisfying it's incredibly aggressive 
listen to that sound. I hope it's coming through on the camera, guys, because this engine is so glorious. The fact that they're going away in favor of hybridization and forced induction and EVs especially is just such a... Uh, it's it's slightly depressing, I must admit, guys. And, you know, I hope you can share that same opinion with me um, because these cars are just so damn awesome for the sake of the emotional response that they provoke out of the driver. This car is modded a little bit, as you guys can probably tell. It features PPE equal length headers along with a uh, NVIDIA full catback exhaust system. So it's got one of the best sounding exhaust setups for this car in my opinion, and especially with the Lexus V8. Um, it just sounds wonderful. It's also lowered on H&R Sport Springs, and it does have a set of wheel spacers. Unfortunately, I do not know the size of the wheel spacers off the top of my head. I will try to find out that information from the owner and list it in the description box down below. We're here on some back roads. Just taking this thing through some of these twisty roads. There is a little bit of body roll. I mean, I'm not driving this thing crazy hard, but it is damped on the softer side, I wanna say. Taking it through some of these longer sweepers, I can kind of feel the chassis roll a little bit and you can feel a little bit of the curb weight. I'm very familiar with a car like the BMW M4, which at the time was a direct competitor um, to this car. And that car feels it feels a bit tighter in, in the corners in terms of its chassis stability. And I've had a relatively extensive amount of track experience with that car as well. Um, this RCF feels a little bit more lazy in the corners, if you will. It doesn't handle terribly by any means, um, but it's, it's a bit soft, I wanna say. It, it feels like the overall suspension setup is tailored more towards the luxury and comfort side of things and daily drivability, as opposed to sheer performance. Let's go ahead and pin it from second. It has such an incredibly smooth power band. It's so linear. You get a nice little shove towards the top end at around 5,500 RPM. It's like, it just squeezes out like an extra 10% out of this motor. And it just, that linear power is very confidence inspiring. Again, you know, just to, for comparison's sake, with a car like the BMW M4 that has a forced induction power plant, high amounts of torque at low RPM, this is much smoother and a result and as a result, it's much more confidence inspiring. You're not constantly breaking the rear end loose on this thing. And you just feel like you can pin it, maximize the power band at all times. <laughs> Although I will say this thing can accelerate to dangerous and illegal speeds very quick. I mean, that was a big number right there and I've only got it into third gear. can't get enough of the responsiveness of this transmission. I was expecting it to feel sluggish and slow, especially for a torque converted unit. Um, you know, typically the gold standard for eight speed automatics is the ZF gearbox that BMW uses in addition to a number of other manufacturers. But this in-house developed transmission by Lexus is very impressive. Um, I actually like it more than the ZF unit. It has more feedback if you will especially on the upshifts it, it kind of has this kick to it and it just it's so aggressive i'm a big fan of this car guys i absolutely love it i think it's totally worth the money i think in terms of long-term values as well these things are going to appreciate it's really a car that i i definitely see appreciating in value over the years um, we've already seen that it's no secret that Lexus has incredibly high resale value with a lot of their models, especially the F cars, and the RCF is no ex exception. And I think over time as well, these cars are just going to prove um, to stand the test of time, not, on not only in terms of durability, but also in terms of market value and appreciation. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap this review up here. Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found the video informative. And with all that being said, I will catch you all in the next one.